And let us join together in reading our opening prayer. Source of wisdom, we behold the Bible and its world, so different from our own. Give us patience to ponder its lessons and to cull the transformative from the irrelevant. Allow your ancient word to nudge our modern minds towards new understandings of love and justice so that our lives are lived with purpose and our relationships grow deep. For love's sake we pray, amen. As the young folks go on their way, I'd invite you into a prayer of reconciliation that we might say together. Patient one, so much of the ancient story is of your invitation and the people's stubbornness. You called for peace and they made conflict. You called for justice and they became selfish. You called for love and they turned inward. It is frightening to recognize ourselves in those actions. Help us to scrutinize our lives such that we might yet turn toward you and your way of living. The world breathes easier when love abounds. Help us to be people who love. Amen. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, invite you into prayer this morning and hope that you might share with me in thinking about uh, things you're thankful for this day or concerns you might have for yourself or others or the world. I was reading the news this morning and reading of an American, or rather of a Canadian couple who were in Hawaii and yesterday received that alert that a ballistic missile was coming to crash into Hawaii. And the great panic that ensued, only to be corrected 37 minutes later, that it was a mistake. But in the news article, the gentleman, or husband and wife, I guess, but he was speaking, said he suddenly realized how precious life was. That, in fact, his kids were back home in Halifax, and he was in Hawaii, and so he was wondering in the news article why there's so much saber rattling and why we aren't pressing more for peace. The other thing that I was uh, thinking about, or at least within our staff team, we decided in this early part of the year we would give thanks for some of the ministries that occur here at St. Martin's. And for this week, we were thinking of people who greet at the door and read scripture for us, who recruit, recruit those folks who share in communion, uh, serving, and so on, that we're grateful for all of those people. And we're also grateful for those who have facilitated a long-standing tradition here of uh, operating the good food box for the community uh, CHEP program, the, the health and education, hunger education program. And so uh, there's some folks who come once a month and facilitate the box distributions here and in a way that supports uh, distribution of good food elsewhere in the city. Much to think about, be thankful for, to pray for. I just uh, wander around for a moment and if you have uh, something you wish to acknowledge with thankfulness or to hold up in prayer, please uh, let me know. Yes, Aline. Yes. Thank you for mentioning, uh, uh, Helene mentioned Lucien, her husband, who's been in hospital and is slowly recovering. And it reminds me also of Jean, who is also in hospital. And uh, we pray for God's peace with them and uh, certainly for healing. Yeah. Our good friend of the neighbor Eileen in the hospital. Okay. For Eileen, who's in the hospital? For the homeless. Everywhere, but in these minus 40 nights, it's pretty sobering. Mm -hmm. We pray for them. Yes? I am thankful that political leaders in this country reach out to all other countries and all people everywhere. Indeed. Uh, for the wisdom of political leaders, sometimes those two words don't always go together, 
But uh, for the wisdom of political leaders, we've seen a lack of wisdom this week in the news. In fact, a terrible insult. So, yes, indeed. Yes? Well, I'm thankful for Earl and company, people he works with, who work in Uganda, believe mainly in school systems, school systems, right, to improve them and put in water supplies. So you don't have to use a dipper like I used to have to use the school. <laughs> Indeed, for the uh, good work that's done uh, in Uganda and elsewhere. And we're going to hear more from Earl and uh, others in a couple, well, maybe a month, uh, about that good work. If you would share with me for a few moments, and then we together might say the Lord's Prayer. Creator of life, we give you thanks for life itself. We're grateful for healthcare institutions that try to nurture us back to good health when our bodies have gone astray. We're thankful for shelter and all the structures that support our society. We're thankful for such a simple thing as natural gas or whatever it is that heats our homes. But even in the midst of our thanksgiving, we're aware of others in need. We think of those here and elsewhere who do not have shelter. We are grateful for the Salvation Army and for the Lighthouse and for other places that open their doors to people who have nowhere to go, especially on these bitterly cold nights. We're thankful for people who work in Uganda and around the world attempting to create a sense of community, a sense of home, a sense of well-being for those who are in need of that and don't know where to turn. We're thankful for the many good gifts that you have given to us in our living, and we pray that peace and love, justice and fairness might abound in the world. We give thanks when leaders are wise and pray that all leaders might embrace your vision of justice and common wealth for the world. And in a moment of silence, we name our particular concerns before you, O oh God. Remembering the words of Jesus, we pray together, our Father and our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.